hi and welcome back to my channel um, first of all I didn't plan to make a two or three month pause from making videos it's just that life kind of happened and um, vacation for three weeks to Mallorca and then some other things happened and I wanted to finalize this project of mine well before this happened and this and this yeah winter is coming and I actually had time to finish my project and finalize my second horror novel just in time to start working on the third one but yeah winter is coming and I'm done with my project uh, the photography part of the project and that is <coughs> sorry that is what I'm going to talk about in this video so as I mentioned in a couple of videos ago I read a book if you, call, if you can call reading a photography book reading I mean you just look at the pictures but anyway um, I read a book about old boring postcards and I got inspired to do this project of mine called at least the working title of the project is boring and mundane um, I don't know what it was about this this actually two books about boring photographs that kickstart the idea of making this project um, but I'll come to that later on in this video and in the end I'll show you some examples of, of the photos I took for this project hi and welcome to my channel thought I'd take a moment of yours and my time to promote myself and my project the latest project that I did and actually that is the first real serious project I've ever done um, I've been wanting to do something uh, more than just random photos of random stuff and environments uh, I feel that has been a lot of fun going out in the street choosing random photographs and um, I'm done with that, at least for the moment. I have a project planned for the winter, um, shooting people rushing by in, in, in the winter darkness uh, with long shutter speeds. So, so that will be fun to do later on. Um, but as of right now, I'm going to talk about the project of Boring and Mundane. Uh, now, during this project, I kind of reconnected with um, old music I've been listening to. Um, first of all, a Swedish artist called uh, Björn Aselius, uh, and he's kind of a house god in my in my home. Um, I tend to go back and forth listening to him in periods of time and um, I found his lyrics were emotional and story driven and storytelling so um, I took inspiration from that and I've been trying to put that into these photographs I've done for my channel no <laughs> for my channel for my project sorry now, um, I'm trying to leave the politics out of it because Björn is a very political artist on the left side, uh, basically just as I am, and, uh, but I don't want politics to influence this project. I just want it to be what it is. 
So, um, listening to Bjorn, my photos started to transform into this kind of storytelling photographs. And because of that, this project grew fast. It grew really fast and became something I didn't expect it to become. So, me and my wife started driving around the areas where we grew up and where we live. Uh, we basically come from the, the same place, just different parts of, of uh, that little town. Um, and during this summer, we drew around basically every little village we can find, we could find, uh, to do this project. Um, we tried to find as much boring places as we could come up with. But not only boring in itself, we also wanted to find boring places that had um, some stories to tell. Uh, so that's why in this project there's everything from schoolyards, old schools, old buildings, empty closed down restaurants, uh, circus tents, amusement parks, amusement rides. I believe there's some closed stores as well there, in there somewhere. So. I took a break from this project only for about three weeks when we went to Spain, to Mallorca for a vacation. Um, we live in Sweden and we have the luxury of seven weeks paid vacation every year. Um, driving around, uh, exploring and spending time with my wife, talking back and forth about growing up, where we, where we grew up. Um, we kind of came to realize that those places were kind of boring and mundane. But I don't know if they really were back when we grew up. Because the entirety of Sweden was a boring place. We didn't have much of cable TV, um, cool stuff like that. We had a Commodore 64 or a Nintendo 8-bit system. Those were high-tech back in the 80s. Um, and if we wanted to go to the cinema to watch the latest movie, we had to wait a couple of weeks before we could actually go to the cinema and watch the movie because the movies came to the north of Sweden a couple of weeks after they had premiere in Sweden. And premieres in Sweden was usually, usually Stockholm, Gothenburg and Malmö. Um, so yeah, it was kind of boring, but that also triggered imagination. Um, and that's probably why I've started writing novels. But, okay, let's forget about that. Let's talk about this project again. I noticed something that I believe been in the back of my mind for a long time. And that's our surroundings here nowadays are very empty. The villages used to be full of life, a lot of people uh, working in industries, and um, keeping these villages alive was a thing when I grew up, but it's not anymore. It feels like that at least, because industries are moving away from Sweden, are moving away from the northern Sweden to uh, lower pay countries where the employees are cheap. I don't know what it's called in English, but yeah. So, finding our surroundings empty, make this project transform again. So, from shooting only empty, boring and mundane places that told a story, I started shooting empty, boring, mundane places telling stories that spoke to us. Okay, this is getting complicated. Bear with me. I started... No. 
Listening to Björn of Celius and his music kind of turned me on to more Swedish music. And uh, coming from an industrial part of Sweden, I started, I reconnected with an artist called uh, Toström. I don't know if anyone heard of him outside of Sweden, no, outside of the Scandinavian countries, possibly Germany. But he plays kind of a dark, uh, moody kind of um, industrial, bluesy jazz oriented rock music with a ton of darkness in them, in it. Now this started to, of course, uh, affect my photography. So um, now I started to think about the stories the places I shot triggered my imagination <laughs> and uh, now I started to shoot for boring mundane, mundane places that told a story to me but in sort of kind of a dark way and I know this is confusing but it ends now uh, so now I have almost, I would say, I have this book I've written down some words in to tell to you. I have 2300 photographs of boring, mundane places that tell a dark story to me. Now, of course, things happen. And during this summer, <coughs> sorry, my favorite poet, of course, released a new book. A new collection of poems. Um, if you're a Swede or a Scandinavian, you've probably heard of Bruno K. Eier. Um, he's kind of a um, punk rock poet with a lot of ima dark imagination written into his sometimes or often and not, oft more often than not. kind of self-centered poets, poems, but often were thought-provoking. And guess what? My project started to change again. Now, with those 2,300 photographs, I am going to pick out about 400 of those, hopefully and send them off to a printing company to get them back and sort out which photos will go on the web and what photos will go in some sort of hopefully printed media like a book or a scene. Uh, I sure hope they will go in a book uh, but will come in, a, in some sort of downloadable PDF document anyway. So I will share them with everyone who's interested. Now, I said this project changed for the final time. And of course it did. Now, this time I um, started thinking about writing. I know I can write. I'm not bad at it. I'm actually quite good at writing. I mean, I wrote two horror novels yet to be published, but I have written them. So now I started to think about the stories these photographs told me. And I bought a little notebook and a pen that always comes with me. An old, um, what are they called? Reservoir pen, just because I love writing with them. And um, as soon as I come up with an idea for some sort of describing text for a photograph, pick out that notebook and write something. Not actually poems, but sort of rather short stories. Short stories about these graphs. And um, I think this project will come out pretty good. 
when it's done, if it gets done. No, no, no. It will get done. And hopefully by the new year, I will have this project out. It would be a dream of mine to get it out in a book form. Um, since I love watching, no, watching, reading um, photo books. by photogra photographers that take kind of the same Im images that I take. Um, I find that extremely inspiring. Um, especially photo books from the past, like 70s, 80s, prob probably 90s, from where I grew up. And I hope I get to do a printed version of this project that can inspire photographers that comes out in 30 years, perhaps. If AI hasn't taken over photography by then, which it probably hasn't, we're out of work. Anyway, in 30, 40 years, I'll be dead anyway, so... Eh. I'm that old. I'm almost 50 now, so... Yeah. In four years, so won't pick up a camera. Unless AI keeps me alive. Oh God, hope not. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, and after that, I will be trying to put, uh, put together some thought, sort of um, exhibition. And hopefully that will come to fruition too. Um, a couple of years ago, I had an exhibition for some science fiction artwork, like this one's, um, inspired by Simon Stollenhag, and um, that went well. I sold about, I think, half the prints I made for that exhibition. And that was only a small exhibition in, in uh, the local town's library. So, to sum this up, I made a project of boring and mundane places that will hopefully render in a book, some sort of printed media, a new website with a new gallery, and an exhibition. But what have I learned about photography during this progress of uh, no the progress the process of doing this project I learned to focus um, and how fun it is to actually plan a project follow it through through uh, going out sometimes meeting people um, going through long car rides with my wife, just talking about regular stuff, just skipping the TV, skipping the video games, YouTube, ironically. Just putting the phone in a pocket and going out, uh, talking about life, talking about what, uh, things that really matters. Uh, and that has been so rewarding. And that made this project grow in ways I couldn't even imagine it would. So it has been a lot of fun. And um, I encourage you. Start a project. Big or small, just start one and follow it through. And see what you have learned and see how you evolve. After all, evolving is kind of a goal for I believe every photographer or everyone with an interesting hobby that they live for. So yeah, please take a look at the photographs I've made for you for this project at the end of this video. And um, I'll hope I see you in the next one. I hardly believe this video will get 1500 views like the last one. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you in the next one.